Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here. This is going to be the uh, predictions and look into TNA Slammiversary 2016. Um, this, of course, is a TNA's pay-per-view. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people didn't know that TNA was having a pay-per-view. Um, honestly, when TNA left Spike TV uh, and they went to... Uh, Damn, what was their last, uh, I can't remember the last company that they were with, uh, but, but when they left them and they went to uh, Destination America, they lost a good number of, of fans and viewers. Um, they, they had already been sort of on the downhill slide. Um, after that, uh, Destination America um, gave up on them and they went to Pop TV, and that's where they are now. Um, even with Pop TV and Destination America, their their ratings are even lower at this point. Um but they're gearing up for TNA Slammiversary, which is their, uh, they're calling it the world's largest, uh, shoot, what was that stupid tagline that they were using? They, they were calling it the, 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 the world's largest party of the summer, or something like that. Uh, Slammiversary has always been uh, TNA's probably second or third biggest show. Of course, Bound for Glory would be their WrestleMania. I've always thought of Slammiversary as their SummerSlam, and of course, Lockdown has always uh, been really popular for them with all of the cage matches. Um, if you look back, last year, of course, Slammiversary 2015 was headlining uh, by Jeff Jarrett returning, where he won the... Uh, King of the Mountain title, which led to the TNA versus uh, Global Force um, storyline, where uh, you know Jeff Jarrett took over being the uh, uh, commissioner. Uh, of, I think it was the commissioner, whatever his you know t t uh, role was, which led to Global Force coming in, which led to Global Force losing to TNA. Um, of course, that storyline was all revolving around uh, Jeff Jarrett giving up his shares to Dixie Carter of the company uh, for Global Force to get some recognition on television. Hopefully, Jeff Jarrett would be able to land a television deal. Um, Jeff Jarrett hasn't been able to get with Spike. Jeff Jarrett hasn't been able to get with Destination America. He hasn't really been able to get with anybody. He filmed uh, the uh, pilot uh, for his television show... I, I think a year ago, he filmed it last summer, didn't he? So, I mean, he's been looking for this television deal for Global Force for a long time. I think that he thought it was going to be more than a summer promotion. I haven't he even heard of Global Force touring this summer, doing that sort of baseball park tour um, with the shows at uh, Minor League Baseball Stadium. So, I don't know. I, I see Global Force being advertised to be on other shows, Um and I don't really see them running their own, so I don't really know what's going on with that. But of course, also, you had the goodbyes of Austin Aries and James Storm. Um, James Storm, I think at that point, would... Uh, he, he, I, think, I think both of them would go back, and they would, or, or either they had filmed television before, but they ended up being on TNA television for a long time, even though these were their last matches, um, before both of them popping up in NXT. Of course, James Storm wrestled two matches for NXT, um, then he ended up going back, um, getting a better contract with TNA. Austin Aries, of course, is uh, um, you know just popped up in NXT. He's wrestled the the, the really good match on the uh, NXT Takeover Special, the end against Nakamura. Um, we'll see what you know it holds up for him in in WWE and NXT. If he's going to be staying in NXT or maybe he's going to be moving up to the main roster as a part of the. Uh, thing, but uh, no, no, no more looking back, only looking into the now. Uh, main event is going to be uh, Drew Galloway going up against Bobby Lashley uh, for the uh, uh, TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Um, this is going to be a big battle. I mean, this this is a main event, two guys really going in there. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if, if Drew Galloway keeps the championship here. They did a really good uh, build-up video of Bobby Lashley going and working out in the gym and getting ready for this fight, um, and him sort of being built up as a really big heel, that uh, it's going to be a really a big test for Galloway to get over this guy. Um, we'll see. I, I think that the Hardy versus Hardy film um, got a lot of build-up, but honestly, if you go look for the uh, Galloway uh, versus Bobby Lashley video that was made to hype up Slammiversary, I think you'd really like that one as well. Uh, take Galloway uh, in the main event. Uh, Full Metal Mayhem, uh, TNA's version of uh, TLC, is going to be Jeff versus Matt Hardy. Um, we talked about this yesterday in its own video. I I'm picking Matt Hardy uh, to win this one just for the reason that if Jeff wins, I don't know how you continue the battle. 
Um, and I don't think that they're just trying to do this as a one-off. I know that they had an I Quit match on television, um, but uh, it seems that even though this is a match that I don't think a lot of people are really fired up to see, it's a match that a lot of people are really talking about, and I think TNA would try to capitalize on that and try to get as much out of it as, uh, as possible. Um, I don't know why Jeff and Matt keep going back. I, I don't know if they just don't have any word on the... Uh, on the you know the, the booking or anything which goes on in TNA or maybe this is a lifelong dream for Jeff and Matt you know they did it in WWE in 2002 they did it with WrestleMania 25 they're doing it here at Slammiversary 2016 maybe it's a lifelong dream that they want to have a big match against each other that you know people will always look back and point and say remember remember Jeff versus Matt Hardy uh, maybe that's just something that they're looking to put on their career because at this point they're already WWE legends uh, for what they did in the WWE tag team division of course Jeff uh, being a world heavyweight champion as well as a WWE champion is always going to be remembered for that. Um, so, you know, maybe they are just trying to accomplish their own dreams. Uh, from there, we go to the Miracle Mike Bennett going up against EC3. Mike Bennett was the first guy to pin or submit EC3. I believe his, uh, his winning streak dated back all the way back to that Bound for Glory that I went to. I don't even remember what year that was, 2013. So, did he have a three year winning streak, two and a half year? Uh, undefeated streak, so I, I'm picking EC3 to, to beat Bennett there. Uh, more than likely because of the fact that the Maria versus Gail Kim match was canceled due to Maria's broken hand. I think that Maria is still going to be there managing um, Mike Bennett, and even though I don't think there's a real connection between Gail Kim and EC3, I wouldn't be surprised if Gail Kim uh, gets her comeuppance um, against Maria. In this match, getting, and with both of them getting involved, even though Maria has a broken hand, it doesn't mean that Gail Kim can't come down and pull her hair and pull her off of the ring apron when she's trying to interfere or something like that. Um, from there, we go to the Decay, Abyss, and Crazy Steve going up against the Bromans. Uh, the Decay are the tag team champions. Uh, they're coming fresh off of a loss where you know them two and their manager lost a three-on-one match against Drew Galloway on Impact. Um, I don't know, man. I like the Bromance. Uh, I don't really think that they're going to win the championship here. I'm going to pick them, though, uh, just because of how much I love them at that Bound for Glory. Um, the guy that they had, Mr. Olympia, uh, the strongest man in the world uh, that was at the uh, outside, I love the fact that he talked smack to me and my buddy Mario the whole time and even told us to finish the match minutes into the match, minutes before it would happen, uh, that the Bromance were winning the championship. So I have a soft spot in my heart for those guys. Uh, from there we go to Eli Drake. Uh, versus Bram. Uh, this is a King of the Mountain match, even though that this is not... Oh, it's a King of the Mountain title match, even though it's not a King of the Mountain match. Um, I'll take Eli Drake uh, in that one. Uh, the Tribunal will be debuting, going up against Grado and Molly Barashira. Uh, this is Al Snow's team. Um, I'll take the Tribunal to get the win, just because of the fact that it's their debut match, and you shouldn't lose uh, when you when you first come out. Braxton Sutter is having a to-be-determined match against a mystery opponent. I don't know who Braxton Sutter is, so I'll take him for the win. Uh, from there, we go to an X Division match: Trevor Lee versus Andrew Evett versus and Eddie Edwards versus DJ Z. I'm a big Andrew Everett fan, but I'm going to be picking Eddie Edwards in this for the reason that I think. That they're building up until the point where the X Division champion uh, will be, you know, using option C uh, to cash in his title uh, to go in against the World Heavyweight Champion and uh, Eddie Edwards. Um, even though um, he doesn't have Davey with him right now, is a damn good wrestler. It doesn't matter if it's singles or doubles. I'm, I'm glad that he's getting his time to shine. I really wish that those guys would have stayed in NXT. i uh, been had a chance to go to WWE because I think that Davey and Eddie, uh, even though I think that Eddie is, is, is the better of the two in my opinion, but I think everybody goes a different way with that tag team. And there is no real Marty Jannetty of the American Wolves. Um, I'll pick Eddie to win just for the dream that I think that he could be a uh, champion of TNA someday. Um, I remember, I think Hurricane Helms debuted at that Slammiversary show last year, too, coming out at the X Division match, and I thought at that point he was actually going to be coming back and wrestling, um, but uh, I, I guess not. He's just leader of a stable. Uh, and then the last match is going to be for the uh, uh, TNA Women's Championship, which is Jade versus Sienna. I'll honestly just take Jade because I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know either of these girls. I don't know who the Tribunal is. I don't know who Braxton Sutter is. Um... But uh, thank you and uh, shout outs uh, to the Wrestling Observer and uh, Filthy Four Daily uh, with uh, um, the good old uh, uh, Filthy Tom, um, who is my source for TNA 
um, reviews uh, to keep up with the product because it is the only uh, podcast that talks about TNA week in and week out as Filthy Tom uh, watches Impact and breaks it down each and every week on Filthy Four Daily, um, which is normally on Monday, uh, but because of uh, the vacation and baby schedule, which is going on with Brian Alvarez as well as as Filthy Four uh, or not oh, Filthy Tom as he waits his second baby being born as his first one was just born. Um, uh, the show moves around a little bit, but at least they always break down TNA and they always tell us what's going on. So that's the talk about Slammiversary 2016. I'll see you guys down the road.